In the beginning, we see a cute little kid named North eating his meal while his parents argue about pans. He keeps calling his mom and dad while they ignore him to keep fighting. North rests his hand on his chest as he is unable to breathe. He was a special kid who did great in academics, sports, and drama. But his parents had never appreciated him for his skills. His parents affected all aspects of his life because he expected appreciation from them. His academics, drama, and sports get lowered. His science experiment doesn't work. He forgets his lines in the drama, and he can't even throw his ball during a baseball game. Upset North goes to a mall and sits in a leather chair where he always sits to calm down. A man in a pink bunny outfit approaches North. This man's name is Gabby. Sad North starts talking and tells Gabby that his parents are the only adult who doesn't notice or appreciates his talents. Everyone else except his parents ignore him. Gabby tries to cheer him up but nothing seems to be working. Gabby then tells him to share his feelings and emotions with his parents. Telling them how he feels will solve everything. But North is not in the mood to share anything with his parents. He says if they can't even appreciate his talents then they don't deserve him at all. North gets an idea, the idea to divorce his parents. He tells this idea to his dear friend at the school named Winchell, who works in the school newspaper. Winchell is amused by his idea and wants North to succeed in his life. He encourages North and tells him to file a divorce against his parents. But before doing this North wants to give them a last chance. He tries to call his mother and father to talk to them. But both are busy with their lives and work. He decides this is it and now he is going to file the divorce complaint. His friends tell him about a lawyer who chases an ambulance to beat the traffic. The lawyer creates the divorce papers and sends them to North's parents. His parents go into shock and become a statue. Everyone in the town hears about this and even the media chases North and his parents for answers. In the court, the judge approves of North's appeal and tells him he needs to find new parents in one summer. If he fails to find new parents he will be moved to an orphanage. His parents can't oppose this because they are not able to move. On his search, North goes to Texas to meet his new potential parents. They both are happy to take him but North wants to know if they deserve him. Their son died in an accident. To make North just like their previous son they try to feed him more and more so he can become fat. They even sing a song telling North what else they have planned for him. But North is definitely not impressed by all this. Later, we see North meeting Gabby, the same guy wearing the pink bunny costume. North is not happy about his current parents. He talks to Gabby who gives him a coin with a bullet hole in the middle of the coin. Gabby gives this coin as a gift and a piece of good luck. North leaves Texas to go to Hawaii to meet his other potential parents. Here. He meets a governor and his wife named Ho, who cannot have their own children. That is why they are so eager to adopt little North. In the beginning, North is really enjoying himself with the governor and his wife. They go swimming in the sea and go flying. But his excitement starts to drain down. The governor has a plan for a campaign where he wants to use North's photo to attract people to move to Hawaii. But when North sees they are using an inappropriate photo he gets angry. The governor has planned to keep this image of the North in every airport. Upset North goes on a walk on the beach the next morning. There he meets Gabby with a metal detector trying to search for something. They both talk and discuss the current situation. Gabby there tells North that his parents should never use their child to feed their greedy nature. North agrees with him and decides to reject these parents. Now, he decides to visit Alaska to meet new potential parents. He gets goes to see his new parents. North and his new father together go fishing inside their house while they talk about Christmas. Just then his new parents introduce him to his grandfather. But he gets shocked and his new mother explains whoever here gets old and can't help society has to die by floating on an ice layer. North is reluctant but still goes to see what happens. Near the ocean, everyone gathers up and sends off grandfather on an ice layer with a TV and sofa. North is again upset and on his way, he again meets Gabby. Gabby reminds North that his deadline is next week and if he is unable to find new parents he will have to go to an orphanage. Now North has to hurry and see all the parents he has on his list. Meanwhile, back in the US, we see North's parents were still in shock and statute, are showcased in a museum. His school friend Winchell and his lawyer are now very rich. North still struggles to find new parents. He even rejects an Amish family without getting off the plane because they have a huge family and no electricity. Later, he goes to China but again rejects them because they wanted him to cut his hair on their terms. Next, we see him going to Zaire, where everyone is almost naked and his mother is not even covering her chest. North keeps staring at her breasts and again has to reject them because he can't get anything done there. Later, he goes to Paris where his new parents just keep smoking and laughing while watching TV. Obviously, he has to reject them too. With just three days to go, North is called back to New York to meet his last set of parents. And to North's surprise, they are completely normal and loving. They have two children and North becomes the third. North is playing and eating with his new folks. But something is still not right. His friend Winchell and his lawyer have made a duplicate of his parents. His parents wake up from the shock and want to see their son. 
the duplicate parents go to the museum to take their place. North's parents to go Winchell and record a tape of themselves saying how much they miss North and that they want him back. Winchell sends this tape to North. But something is wrong. Winchell has edited out the taped voice and made it seem like North's parents don't want him back. North feels broken inside when he hears about his parents. The new folks ask North if they can do anything for him. North asks them to adopt him, but soon his empty soul begins to question everything that is happening. He decides to leave this new family to go meet his real parents. His change of heart is not taken happily by his friend Winchell and his lawyer. They plan to kill North. On his way home, he is attacked and has to run for his life. He bumps into one of his friends. His friends tell North about everything. How Winchell betrayed him and how he edited the tape. His friend gives North the original tape. Somehow, running from the shooter North ends up near Gabby. Both Gabby and North watch the real tape and feel emotional. Gabby explains to North to go see his parents and make up with them. There is no need to keep fighting for something he already has. North agrees with Gabby and wants to meet his real parents. Gabby later drops North at an airport. But he is not allowed to board the plane because the news of his death has already reached the newspapers. In the airport some kids see North trying to go back to his hometown. They don't want North to get back with his parents and run after him to stop him. He runs outside the airport where Gabby is driving a FedEx vehicle. North quickly jumps into the vehicle. Gabby tells North to hide in a box. Winchell comes to the understanding that North is still alive and plans for something more devious. A FedEx box is dropped in front of North's house. North comes out of the box and starts looking for his parents. He looks everywhere but doesn't find his folks anywhere inside the house. But his Winchell is waiting for North. He tells North he only has 9 minutes to find his parents otherwise he will be sent back to an orphanage. Winchell tells him his parents are waiting in the mall where he likes to go. North runs out of the house and gets on his bicycle to reach the mall in time. His parents are waiting right next to his favorite sitting spot, hoping to see North. Even the court judge is waiting inside the mall. North rushed over pushing people out of his way. At last, only one minute is remaining. Just before the due time, North sees his parents. His parents start to run across to hug North and he keeps running toward them. But the assassin who tried to kill North is sitting in the mall waiting for the right moment. Just when North is going to hug his parents the assassin takes a shot and North wakes up in his favorite chair. He looks around but no one is in the mall. Gabby shows up with his pink bunny costume in his hands. Gabby asks what happened and offers North a ride home. They both talk inside the car about family and home. North takes out his good luck charm from his pocket. The coin with a bullet hole in the middle is still North. Gabby asks what that is, to which North replies it is something he always had. Before getting out of the car Gabby tells North he is lucky to have a family and a home. North keeps staring as Gabby drives away into the dark night. His mom and dad open the main door yelling his name. North quickly runs towards them to hug them tightly. They both explain how much they were worried and that they even called all the hospitals and police stations. North is pleased to see his mom and dad worry for him. He tells them he fell asleep in the mall. His dad and mom tell him how much they love him. North in his bed tells them all about his dream. His parents feel guilty and apologize to North. They both promise North that they will try harder to give him more affection and attention. North feels happy and sleeps back in his bed.